Welcome back to the Umbraco Beginner Course. In this lecture, we'll look at creating and managing document types. We already looked at document types in a previous lecture, but as a brief recap, document types are the root element of your content item, and all content items that you create will have a document type assigned to them, um, which means that that content type will inherit all properties created on the document type and it will allow you to assign values to those properties that were set in the document types. Think of document types as boilerplates of what an item or a content item should look like. So for example, if you have a blog post, you'd have a specific property set to that blog post that will be different to the contact us page, for example. Um, so let's have a look at some of the existing document types that were created in the sample website in Embraco. So to view document types, head over to the settings section in the back office. And there you will see a document types node, extend that. And there you will see all the existing document types that are already there. So let's have a look at blog post, for example. And these are all the properties assigned to a blog post. You can also create different tabs for each for, for each document type. This is a way of um, managing properties and grouping them into a nice, easy to manage um, way that an editor would understand, for example. So if we wanted to look at some of the properties um, inside content, we can see it has page title, excerpt, content, categories, and we can even add a new property by clicking the add property option at the bottom of the tab. We can do that to every tab on here. We can even create a new tab. So if we were to create a tab saying I need tab, we then have a new tab and we need to assign a property to it in order for that tab to then become visible. So my first property tab that will then generate an alias we can also edit this um, by clicking on the lock symbol and then that will allow us to edit this but it's be best practice to leave this by default as locked and let Embraco create the alias for you it's also best practice to add the description to every property so that the editor who's creating the content items knows exactly what can and should go inside this property. So I should say in here you'd obviously put something more descriptive depending on your item. And then we can add an editor. So this would be the item assigned um, the, the data type that will be assigned to this particular property. So for example, if we were to add um, one of the default items on here, in the next lecture, we'll look at some of these um, document properties in more detail. But for now, let's just select text box, which is just a simple text box element. Click Submit. And we can even add some validation to it so we can make the field mandatory or we can add other validation like email number or URL. And we can even set a custom regular expression um, validation, which would allow us to pretty much do any sort of validation on the field. For now, let's just leave it as default and click submit. And there we go. We have our new property added to the tab. So let's click on save. And then if we go to a blog post, we should be able to see this item added there. So if we go into content and then extend the home node and then click on the blog, and then select any of these blogs. And then you'll see my new tab on here with my first property in a tab, and there we can add some information. 
However, now that we've added information to this property, this won't affect how this blog will look like. This is because we haven't actually added that property to um, the particular template that's been applied to this document type, and therefore there will be no there will be no effect to the content item in the way that it looks even after we've published. So in the later lecture, we'll have a look at how we can link this property to the template and make it show up on our blog post. But for now, we just need to see that there's no change to the blog post item. So let's head back to document types, so settings, and then blog posts. And then another thing to note in here is that you can reorder items on the tab. So to do this, you can click the reorder button on the top right. This will then change the view of your Umbraco uh, document types editor. And it will look in a slightly different way where you can click and hold and then drag and drop items so that you can change their order. And that will allow you to rearrange the order of the items. Once you're done, you can click I'm done reordering and it will take you back to the normal editor view and you can see your items have moved around, tag categories um, used to be at the bottom, but now it's here. So if we want to save this, we just click save. Cool. Now, if you want to create a new document type, let's say you needed something um, something new that's not already on the website, you can um, do this simply by clicking the three dots to the right of the document types node. As a general point, the three dots to the right of any node in Umbraco will normally allow you to perform some sort of action. And most typically, one of those actions, or at least one of those actions, is creating a new item underneath that node. So as a general point, um, if you wanted to create an item under any of these nodes or any other node in Umbraco, your first step will be to click on these three dots and then follow the, the wizard. So in this case, we're going to create a new document type. And then let's call this document type um, my document type. And we can even add a description for this. Now, if we wanted to create our first property, so we need to create a tab. So let's call this tab um, content. And then add a property. And then let's call this property content title. This can be the title of this. Item. And then let's add property to it. Let's make it a text box again. Click submit. And this time we want this field to be mandatory because we always want to have a title for our content. And then click on submit. And then save. Okay, so this is our new document type that we've created, and you can see this document type element was other than the new document types node, and it's you can see it here, my new document type on the left. So if we wanted to create a new document type, um, a content item with the document type, or the document type of type, my new document type, <laughs> a bit confusing. Um, head over to content. And then again, let's click on the three dots to create a new content item. And then here we can see create an item under home and it allows us to create a blog, contact, content page, people or product. However, our new document type that we just created isn't appearing under here. This is due to permissions set on the home node. So let's go back into settings and edit the home node in order to allow us to create a content item 
of type my new document type underneath the home node. So head over to settings, click on the home document type under the document types node. And then to the, on the top right here, you will see design, list view, permissions, and templates. Go ahead and click on permissions. And over here on the uh, underneath allow us root, there's an item called allowed child node types, which has a description of allow content of a specific specified types to be created underneath content of this type. So here we're basically adding items that can be created underneath the home node. So if we click add child and then scroll to find our new document type, there is my new document type. And there we go, we have my new document type underneath the home node, which means we can now create content items underneath the home node. So let's head over back to content and then click on the three dots to the right of home. And then you can see my new document type is there. So if we go ahead and select that, we can now create a new document type. And if we just give it a simple name of content one and try and publish it, we can see that we can't because the field is required, which we set in the document type. So let's give it a title of Hello World. And then save and publish. And then we can see this new item of type, my new document type was corrected. We can also see a link to this item. However, if we click on this, it would not display anything. This is due to the fact that there's no template currently set on our new document type. We'll have a look at this in a later lecture. Um, however, for now, I'll just note that you can't, you won't just be able to create a document type um, without assigning a template to it. So another thing that we can see here is on underneath the content notes is home has a little picture of a home. Product products has a little picture of a Check out trolley. People has um, a little icon of a lot of people. Blog has a little icon of a calendar, and so on. And our content item doesn't have an image of anything. It's just it's just um, it's just an empty page. So to go ahead and change that in order for us to make it clearer to the user what this item is, we can also set that inside settings and head over to our newly created document type. And then to the left of the document type name, there's a icon document option. So just click on that. And then here you can select from many different icons. You can even choose a color. So if we would select green and then set this to Windows, for example, doesn't really matter what we set it to as this is just the example. And then head over back to content and then refresh the page. And then extend the home node. And then we can see our new item has an icon now set against it. And then every time we create a new item, it will appear as that icon. So if we were to click on the three dots, we can see our new document type has that icon in the color green. So this should be most of the things that you need for document types covered. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we'll look at document properties. Thank you very much and see you in the next lecture.